So you want to make enemies for your game. Well, let's jump in. Beginning with the most useful tool in the entire kit, the rectangular movement behavior, which will soon or already is upgraded to this version. And in this version, you have access to tweens, which changes the tool entirely, because now you can not only do rectangular movement or horizontal or vertical lines, but you can also tween between them which means you can make much more specific movement patterns for traps, platforms, enemies, and whatever this thing is in Hollow Knight. And next we have a thwomp from Mario that's being triggered by raycasting. Raycasting is basically just creating a line between two points and then checking for a specific object along that line. And in this case, if we go to the event sheet, we'll see that we're checking for the slammer object and starting the raycast from the center of the player, shooting it at an angle of 270 so it goes up, to a distance of 200 pixels. And when the raycast finds the slammer object, and its animation is idle, we set the animation to blink, which means that this event can't trigger again until that animation is changed to idle. And then we shake the object, wait for 0.4 seconds, and then tween it to the floor. If I go to the object and open it up, you'll see that it has two variables the slam position and the start position, and they're zero by default. But if I go to the instance properties and scroll down, you'll see that for this instance, I've changed those to something else. Because where it is now is 416 along the Y axis. And if I change its Y position, you can see that 555 is where I want it to land. So those are the two variables that I'm using in the event. We'll be tweening to that slam position variable along the Y axis. And for the duration, we'll be using the slam position minus the starting position, so the duration is based on the distance to the ground. But that was kind of fast, so I times it by two. And then when that tween is finished, we remove the tween, wait a second, and then start the next tween called rising. It's going back to the start position, and its duration is set to five times the distance, so it goes up a little slower. And then when the rising tween finishes, we do a little shake, wait 0.4 seconds, and then set it back to idle so that the first event can trigger again. So that's a single raycast coming up from the player and using an animation change to dictate a behavior. So now we can move on to something a little more mobile. These enemies have the platformer behavior, and when they walk into a collision object, they turn around and go the other way. That much isn't complicated. When we go to the event sheet, we'll start with this event where if the animation of the trunk enemy is walk, and they are horizontally flipped, we simulate the pressing of the right button, so they'll go right. If they aren't flipped, we simulate the pressing of the left button, so they'll go left. And to tell them to turn around, we added a point to the object, and then in the event sheet, if that point goes into the wooden wall object, the trunk enemy, if horizontally flipped, is turned back around, and if it's not horizontally flipped, then it's set to flip. And that's all you need for the back and forth movement. But this enemy can also attack you if you get in front of it. Which is being done with raycasting. So in the event sheet, we have this section for player check. If the trunk is walking, and is or isn't horizontally flipped, it will cast a ray either at 180 degrees or 0 degrees from the enemy to check if the player's there. And if it finds the player, it changes the animation of that trunk enemy to attack. And then when it's set to attack, when its frames are above 8, it will fire a bullet at either 0 degrees or 180 degrees based on how it's flipped. And then when the animation finishes, it goes to idle. And then when the idle animation finishes, it goes back to walk. So there's a simple loop of walking around, and then if the player gets in the way, changing to attack. And then when the attack is finished, it goes to idle. And then when idle is finished, it goes to walk. But there's one more interaction we can do with them. My little follower object here is using the fire bullet extension so it can shoot as well. And if I shoot one of the enemies, you'll see they get hurt. And if we go to the event sheet, you'll see why. If the trunk is in collision with a bullet, delete the bullet, and then set the animation to hit. And this isn't dependent on any other animations. So whether they're walking, attacking, or idle, shooting them will switch them straight to hit. And then when the hit animation finishes, it'll go to idle. And now to step it up one more notch. 
This enemy has a similar behavior to the Primal Aspid, which people find to be the most annoying enemy in all of Hollow Knight. And the way that it moves is different than everything else, but it still works the same way as the trunk with its animations. The way it moves is based off of the Boyd's extension in combination with the newly updated, or will soon be updated, Ellipsis movement extension. The Boyd's extension can be used to get objects in your game to swarm or avoid things in an intelligent way. And the Ellipsis movement extension is like the rectangular movement extension, but for circles and curved shapes. So if we go to the event sheet, you'll see that the very first thing is that if the player gets within 200 pixels, and the bee's animation is idle, then it's switched over to chase. And then if the bee's animation is chase, and the player is still within 200 pixels, it triggers the two Boyd actions to have the bee enemy come towards the player, but also avoid them, so they'll keep a healthy distance away. And then while it's in its chase animation, if you're able to get away from it, then it changes the animation back to idle, and stays there. Now if you want to continue learning how to make these kinds of game mechanics, click on this video for how to make a boss fight.